Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to part 31 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. So in this video, we're going to be giving our character the ability to fly around the scene. And we're going to actually be able to do this in just one video rather than three or four like our previous controllers, because we're really going to be working a lot with the foundation that we've built in our walking controller and even taking a little bit from our vehicle controller to make this a fully fledged and functioning controller for us. So we can get started here by opening up our walking controller script as well as our flight controller scripts in MonoDevelop. I've got them both open here as you'll see. And we can actually copy pretty much everything we have in this walking controller script. And go all the way down, checking the grounding and facing, all of this here, right down to reset movement to zero, and we'll copy all that. And I'm gonna paste this over, including pasting over this read input method, and that is because we have our own read input method from the walking controller right here. Now we are gonna make several changes to this, mostly because we need to change how the movement is going to work in terms of, uh, particularly in terms of our vertical movement, as well as um, setting up some activation and deactivation methods so that we can get in and out of our flight controller, much how we do with our vehicle controller. So to start, we're gonna change our vector three movement velocity. I'm gonna change it from walk velocity and I'm gonna click right click and click refactor rename I'm going to change this to fly velocity. Likewise, we're going to change the name of the previous walk velocity. And we'll just change that to previous fly velocity. And the reason for that is that whereas prior we've just been looking at the x and z coordinates of our walk velocity, now we are going to incorporate that y coordinate as well. So I want to change the name because this is really going to be how we're controlling all axes of our flight. Uh, we can keep the facing direction, but we can actually get rid of these adjusted vertical velocity and jump press time because we're not going to be jumping anymore. As we know, we're going to actually be increasing and decreasing our elevation much more like how we're walking in the scene. So we'll delete both of these. Walk speed, I'm going to change and refactor this and rename it H speed for a horizontal movement. And then our jump speed will rename to be V speed for our vertical movement. And the V speed I'm actually gonna to reduce to about 2.5 so that you're moving a little bit slower when you're moving up and down versus moving laterally in any direction. We are no longer gonna need the interaction duration or our attack damage because we're eliminating those controls. And we also don't need this hitbox event handler and on interact event because those will no longer be happening when we're in flight mode. In addition to all these though, I do want to add one more thing which is a way to handle exiting. And if we open up, if you go into the sidebar here into vehicle controls and open up our vehicle controller, you'll remember that we had this exit controller controller that let us kind of bounce back out to our walking controller when we were done in our vehicle. We're gonna do pretty much the same thing. In fact, I'll copy this right from the vehicle controller and I'm gonna paste it in here. I'm gonna say exit controller for, I will just say exit controller and paste that in here. And so now we'll be able to access that. We'll, you know, handle that in the activation and then when we deactivate, we can go back to the walking controller um, much more easily. Now, as for our start function, we can keep that pretty much the way it is right now. And our read input is really where a lot of this stuff is going to start changing. So the two things we're really gonna change inside of our read input is what had been our vertical jump and our interaction. Our attack is gonna change as well, but that's just gonna become an exit method, much like what we have in our vehicle controller. What really matters here though, and what really needs to change is the movement we're controlling, which is gonna be with these two buttons, the zero button and the one button. So what we can do is delete everything inside of both of these if statements. And I'm gonna quickly change the comments as well. And we're gonna say increase elevation and decrease elevation. Now obviously these will only be happening if these buttons are being pressed, but it kind of gives us the idea. So what we're gonna do now, much in the way that when we controlled our um, fly velocity on the horizontal axes, all we did was we simply took that fly velocity, which we had reset to zero, 
and we said, oh, add a forward velocity or add a right velocity or their opposites, depending on which axis we're pressing. In this case, we don't have to, we're not really controlling that axis. Um, we're, we, had to, we either have their zero button, our space bar being pressed, or the first button, the Z button being pressed. So we know right there that for sure we're either moving up with the space bar or down with the Z button. So we're gonna handle this a little bit differently, but still the same idea of taking our fly velocity and adding a vector three of some sort to it. So for increasing our elevation, we can say fly velocity plus equals vector three dot up. And we can simply multiply that by our V speed. For our Z button, we can do the exact same thing. In fact, I'll copy this and I'll paste it. But we'll simply multiply it by the negative of the V speed so that it's taking our up direction and making it down. You could also simply say vector 3 dot down, but I find that this having the consistency there is actually a little bit nicer. In addition, I'm actually going to speed us up a little bit when we're going in a negative direction um, because we're because gravity is kind of helping you out there. You're kind of going into a dive, if you will. So I'm going to multiply this by 1.5f as well. So it's really kind of a feel thing there. You can add that in if you want to. You can leave it out, move up and down at the same speed. But that's just something I'm going to do there. Lastly, our if data buttons 2 is true, we're going to want to exit. So I'm going to say check exit button. And we're going to simply add an exit, a call to an exit method here. It changes the name of it because we haven't written it yet. Don't worry about that, but just say exit with parentheses. And we can actually add this down at the bottom of our um, script here. So we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and we'll add a quick void exit method. And this is again something we're going to be taking very similarly from our vehicle controller. If we scroll all the way down in our vehicle controller, we have down here around, around line 113 exit, and all we're doing there is activating that exit controller that we'll set up. So we can simply say that here as well. Exit controller dot activate. And so that makes sure that we are reactivating the walking controller and getting out of the flight controller. Now the next place that we need to change some stuff is here in late update. Um, late update had been previously kind of checking a lot of things for things like jumping, which we can get rid of, so we can get rid of this jump press time, which we no longer have as a variable. Um, we do want to keep check for facing change. And then the last thing here though is that what we had been doing was setting our x and z velocity based on how we were walking and then our y velocity was set based on our jumping system. It was a little bit different. Well now it's all going to be based on the fly velocity, x, y, and z. So we could say fly velocity, oops, fly velocity dot y. But at this point now, we're creating a brand new vector three just to take the x, y, and z all from fly velocity. So all we really need to say is that our rigid body's new velocity should be equal to our fly velocity vector three. Um, looking up here, I can actually see we no longer need grounded. Grounded was really just being checked if we were jumping, which since we're no longer doing, so we can get rid of that method up there. And now our check for facing change, I believe, stays this as is. Yeah, we don't have anything we need to change in there, nor do we need to change anything in our change facing. We're not going to be facing down or up if we're moving in those directions. We're still going to kind of keep horizontal facings, so we don't need to change anything in either of those. Um, here in our reset movement to zero, we can get rid of the adjusted vertical velocity because we no longer have that as a variable. We can keep that there like that. And now that really is everything we need for the actual um, movement controls of our controller. In fact, we can kind of try this out now and see how it works for us. Hit play and walk around. And now you'll notice once I get to this power up and I touch it, I'm still now able to walk around. It's a little bit funky because my um, facing is no longer working and we will fix that in just a couple minutes. But now we can also, if I press and hold the space bar, you see that I just keep moving up and up and up. I'm not just jumping, I'm actually moving at a constant speed up into the air. Now, if you notice, 
you can just barely see it, but if you look at the headlights of the car at the bottom of the screen here, you can see that I'm very slowly now moving down, moving down toward the ground. And we don't want that to happen. And there is a reason for that happening. If I press the Z button, I'll actually move down even faster. But even if I'm not pressing the Z button to move down, I am very, very, very slowly being pulled down. And the reason for that is that even though we have a zero movement in, um, in our Y axis, when I'm not pressing the Z or the space bar, I'm still being affected by gravity. It's being reset every frame, so I'm, I'm just very barely being um, pulled by gravity. It's as if I've just stepped off of a ledge every single frame. But it is happening there, so what we want to do is we want to go into our player um, object here and say, when the flight controller is active, stop using gravity. And we can do that pretty easily. What we need to do is we need to set that inside of our um, inside of our controller activation method. Now we don't have one in our flight controller script right now, but we can add one pretty easily right from our vehicle controller. In fact, we can copy both of these from our vehicle controller and paste them into our flight controller. Now we can delete this passenger model set active. We don't need that because we don't have a passenger model for our flight controller. We'll save that. We want to keep this exit controller because we want we do want to definitely assign our walking controller. Once we gain the ability of flight, we want to be able to exit back to the walking controller. So that's good to have there. And the other thing we can though add is right below that we're going to say get component rigid body, access that rigid body component, and we're going to check its use gravity boolean, and we're going to set that equal to false. Likewise, when we deactivate, we want to make sure that, that we start using gravity again. So I'm going to copy that and paste that into our deactivate method. But here, I'm going to say that using gravity should be true again. Now, the other thing we're doing, if you recall, when we pick up that power up, is we're actually adding in that flight controller component to our player. It becomes, you know, it wasn't there when we started the scene, and then it gets added in. We want to make sure we remove that component again when we um, deactivate the flight controller so that we don't keep on piling on more and more flight controllers. And the easiest way to do that is we can simply say destroy this. And this might look like it would actually destroy the player object itself and we would you know, just lose the player altogether when we exit out of flight. But destroy works in a couple of ways. If you were to say destroy game object, then that would destroy your entire object in the scene. However, when we say this, we are referring to the actual flight controller script, or in this case, the flight controller component. So that simply gets removed directly from the scene for us, or from the object for us. So if we jump back over to Unity now and we hit play, we should see that we can go over, get our flight power up, the flight component appears here. I can now start moving up, I no longer sink to the ground, however I can move back down, and then when I hit the X key to exit out of the flight controller, you'll see that this component down here disappears from our character, and we drop right to the ground because we are once again using gravity. So that really gives us everything we want there. The only problem is that if I reset this again, hit play, get that power up, we see that I'm still, my facing is not changing, and that is one thing we want to fix. Now, how we have our facing sphere, which is this object we added to our player, that is what kind of shows us which way we're facing right now, that, when we start our scene, kind of assigns itself to special events inside of the walking controller that says, oh, when facing changes, I'm going to fire off a method inside of myself to move around. And we need access to that um, method. So we're going to open up the facing sphere script. You can open it up from inside of um, inside of the object here, or you can also go into your scripts and get it there. And you'll see here it is. This is the, this is the script that is being used in our um, in our walking controller here on awake. It assigns itself to the on facing change event of walking controller, and then we can use this to um, to change the facing. 
However, we can't do that with our flight controller because it doesn't exist at the start of the scene. So we need to actually actively go in and say, oh, when we activate the flight controller, we want to assign this method from the facing sphere to our own facing change event here. We can do that relatively easily, but we need to make this refresh facing in the facing sphere a public method so that now we can access this from outside of the facing sphere. So in our flight controller, we can now go down to our activate method and we can simply say on facing change, which is that event that we have in flight controller, and we're going to add a method to it. And that method that we're going to add is inside of the facing sphere component, but we can't get that we can't get access to that with just get component because our flight controller isn't on the same object as the facing sphere. The facing sphere is actually, our flight controller is on our player, facing sphere is a child of that, so we'll need to get, say, get component in children facing sphere. Since there's only the one on the, face, on the single facing sphere, we can do this safely and not worry about it ac accessing the wrong component. And then from there we can say dot uh, refresh facing. And so now this is adding the facing spheres refresh facing method to the event inside of flight control so that now whenever we change direction in our flight controller we're still changing that facing sphere much like we do with the walking controller. So now let's do this one last time. We'll hit play here and we should now see that once we pick up that power up now our facing sphere works the way we want it to. We can even fly up into the air and fly around and our facing is apparent to us. So this is working just as we want it to. And that really wraps up the three types of controllers we have. Because we now have our walking controller that we walk around the world, our flight controller that we just saw, and we can still even get into our vehicle and drive around with that. So we've got these three different types of controllers that can all be activated within the scene by a different means. And um, we can you know, just interact with our world in three different ways because of it. So with that, this really wraps up the main bulk of this series. We've seen how input works. We've seen how that input can then be translated into motion in different controllers. And we've seen how to switch between those controllers. I am going to do one last video to kind of tie up some loose ends, fix a couple of little um, inoptimized things so that we're making sure that this is working really the best possible way it can. But um, this last video, will, the next video we have will be our last video in this series, so I have um, really hope you've enjoyed watching it. Stay tuned, we're going to have some more, a little bit shorter topics uh, coming up on the channel. But um, this has been a blast to do, and if you guys obviously have questions, leave them in the comments. Or certainly feel free to join my Patreon page. I can uh, usually get to answers a little bit quicker there. And um, yeah, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.